In this presentation, we're going to go back over some of those terms that I just reviewed, but I'm going to add in there an example. So um, for those of you who learn by doing, you'll actually be able to practice the scientific method with a science experiment project. That's the main project for this first unit. Um, and hopefully this example will help you sort of bring these concepts home because I know it's difficult just to sort of read them. Um, I feel like the example will help you grasp the whole concept. And if you have questions about the scientific method, please feel free to email me um, within the Canvas course space. And this lecture is all given by me, um, your instructor, Jackie Fritz. So if you have questions, send emails. Um, I recommend that you take notes as you go through this. So you can hit pause at any time during this presentation. It works just like a movie. And then you can hit play again to have it continue. So again, we're talking about the scientific method. This time, I'm going to talk about a lemonade experiment. So remember we talked about an observation being the first stage in this whole process, just sort of gathering your thoughts. So I love lemonade. Um, and to make lemonade, you need lemons, water, and sugar. But I'm also pretty health conscious, and I don't like consuming a lot of added um, sugars. So I was wondering, could I use something different like honey or agave nectar in my lemonade. Okay, so if I'm thinking about trying out one of these other types of sweeteners, I have a particular research question in mind. It's a problem that I want to investigate. And that is, if I make my lemonade with agave nectar or honey, will it taste as sweet as lemonade made with sugar because I'm going to be serving this to a lot of people and I want them to enjoy it as well. Now I'm going to plan my experiment. First I have to identify my variables and I will have three different types of variables in my experiment. my independent variable. So this is what I am manipulating. That is the type of sweetener, agave nectar or honey. The dependent variable, so the outcome of that independent variable is that taste of sweetness. And my control group, so what is the standard um, is the lemonade made with sugar. Now it's time for me to put all of these variables and my research question together into a hypothesis. So I'm making an educated guess about what I think the outcome of my experiment will be. So I think that if I make lemonade using honey then it will be just as sweet as lemonade made with sugar. Also, I think if I make lemonade using agave nectar, then it will be just as sweet as lemonade made with sugar. So you can see that I incorporated my independent variables, honey for the one hypothesis, agave nectar for the second, and my dependent variable is the same for those two, which is sugar, the sweetness. Um, you can see that I have two hypotheses. This is to keep my variables um, controlled so that I know what I'm evaluating. Remember this came up as a tip, and you'll see that tip again here. But having two separate hypotheses one for each of the independent variables is what you need to do to keep your experiment focused.
Now it's time to actually conduct the experiment. So first I'm going to have a title. It's the effect of honey or agave nectar on the sweetness of lemonade. Again, one sentence uh, to sort of tie together my independent and dependent variables. Again, the independent variables are honey or agave nectar, and my dependent variable is sweetness. This is that variable tip that I was referring to. So again, we're isolating our independent variables. We're observing one at a time. We just so happen to be doing so all within the same experiment. And we also have those control variables, so we have something to compare it to. Okay, so how am I conducting my experiment? How am I, how am I actually keeping those variables consistent and separate? So I make three pitchers of lemonade. Each pitcher has equal amounts of lemon juice and water and I give the amounts there. Quarter cup of lemon juice and five cups of water in each pitcher. Then I label the pitchers. In pitcher A, I add half a cup of sugar. In pitcher B, I add half a cup of honey. And in pitcher C, I add half a cup agave nectar. So I'm keeping all of my at my add-ins to that lemon water base the same amount. We're keeping everything consistent so we can clearly evaluate the differences among those three pitchers. And keep in mind, pitcher A is our sugar pitcher, so that's our control. Now that I have my lemonade, it's time to take it to my participants for them to evaluate the sweetness. So I'm going to give them each three clear plastic cups. Each cup is labeled to match the pitcher from which the lemonade came. So there's pitcher A, plastic cup A, pitcher B, plastic cup B, pitcher C, plastic cup C. And then in each of those plastic cups, I'm going to put in three tablespoons of the lemonade, of each separate lemonade. So they're getting a small amount of each one, and everything is labeled consistently. Participants drink the lemonade and rank the sweetness on a one to five scale, with one being not so sweet to five being very sweet. So what I'm doing here I'm putting a quantitative amount to something that's difficult to measure. Sweetness is a perceived characteristic of a food. And as a researcher who's trying to conduct a good experiment, I have to put a value on that sweetness. So I came up with my own scale. And a one to five ranking scale is a great scale to use because you can have a middle point, which would be the number three, and that in this case would be neutral. So this is all information that you have to keep in mind when you're designing your experiment so that you can measure your variables and keep your variables consistent and straight. All of this information should be written in the procedures section of your report. And I'll go over more details of the report um, later on in this week's lesson. I mentioned that we were giving the lemonade to a series of participants. When you use people in your experiment, you have to keep in mind some other factors to remain consistent in your experimental design. So I got from my participants their gender and their age. I was particularly looking for their age 
because other studies have shown that your preferences and your perceived um, sweetness of foods has changed over, over the years. Another thing I might write here is, for example, say I just happen to have two participants who were under the age of 10. I would probably make a note of that in my participant section just because that characteristic separates them from the rest of the group. When you write your procedures and your participant section, you want to write these so that somebody else could redo this experiment with the information that you're giving them. Also, this is information that you will reflect upon when you're writing the conclusion part of your paper because there are some things that you might want to change uh, if you were to redo the experiment. For example, I could give all three different types of lemonades to a group of adults over the age of 25 um, just to see if I would get a different result. So that is why you re really need to keep track of all the information about your participants. Again, we're keeping as many things in the experiment as identical as possible. So that's why we, again, sort of look at our group of participants and note any differences of certain participants um, compared to the whole group. And again, if you had time, repeat the experiment. Um, that way you can find out if your results are accurate. Um, collecting data. We're going to talk, so I talked a little bit about the scale. So you're having participants fill out a scale. They're giving a numerical measurement to something that you typically wouldn't be able to measure. Like, for example, you can't hold a ruler up to somebody's tongue and say, how many inches of sweetness is that? So that's why we came up with the scale. Here's an example of collecting data for this experiment. You would do a simple spreadsheet listing each participant and the rating that they gave for each cup of lemonade. Also, I would recommend in your data chart, if you have a scale, just below it indicate what each number means. So on here, I would have um, sweetness scale 1 to 5, 1 being not sweet, 2 being somewhat sweet, 3 being neutral, 4 being sweet, and 5 being very sweet. Pictures. I didn't get to have any pictures of this experiment, but if I did, I would make sure that I would show the procedure. So pictures of me making the lemonade, setting up the pitchers and the cups, um, handing out the cups to participants. In this case, if you take pictures of the results, just make sure it's okay with your participants that you can photograph them. And you might want to include pictures if they have sort of a very strong physical reaction to the lemonade. Um, you want to take pictures of anything that would help somebody else understand your experiment. Okay, so now I'm going to wrap up the information that I collected by doing my experiment. So I found that on average, participants ranked the sweetness of pitcher A as sweet. Uh, participants ranked the lemonade from pitcher B on a scale of two as somewhat sweet. And when participants drank the lemonade from pitcher C, they ranked that as sweet. So you can see in my conclusion, I am listing out what type of sweetener was in each pitcher and the average rank of sweetness for each pitcher. If I had any sort of really unusual data, 
for example, let's say I had 25 participants and 24 of them ranked pitcher A as four and one person ranked it as one. I could write about that outlying data, um, especially if I knew if that certain participant was much younger or very different from the rest of the group in any way. Um, I After I've listed sort of my analysis of the data, then I'm going to take it back to those hypotheses that I wrote at the beginning to say whether or not they, the data supported the hypothesis. Um, as you can see in the data, participants ranked the lemonade using honey as somewhat sweet. So my hypothesis, if I make lemonade using honey, then it will be just as sweet as lemonade made with sugar, is not supported. If I look at the data on um, my agave nectar lemonade, I can see that participants on average ranked that as sweet, which is equal to that of their rank on average of the lemonade made with sugar. So my hypothesis, if I make lemonade using agave nectar, then it will be just as sweet as lemonade made with sugar, is supported. So what does this tell me? Now I get a chance as a researcher to reflect on my data Look at what other people doing research on sweetness have said, and I can make some um, overall conclusions. So something I might want to look at is how do people per rank the sweetness, perceive the sweetness of agave nectar as opposed to honey? Maybe all along um, people find agave nectar to be sweeter than honey. So that could influence the overall sweetness of my lemonade. Um, in this section, it allows you to also make aware of future research opportunities that relate to this topic that other scientists could do to find out more about the topic.